Hello everyone and welcome to this week's UXP quick tip. This one I'm going to be talking about the differences in the API versions of UXP and as well a few of the missing support things that are going to prevent you from doing some rather normal things that you would do in your CEP extensions. This video may be time sensitive because at the moment UXP is constantly changing as they start to get towards the first full release and upgrade of removing CEP and scripting to update to the UXP language. So some of this stuff might change in the future and if so I'll probably make an updated video. But before we get started with the missing support and UXP version differences, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates as well as Instagram for other live updates and down there you can check out a link to this uh, UXP guide which will get you through to all the links we'll be discussing today. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get up with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. You can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks like Discord status, badges, code in advance, weekly live streams, and much more. And you can also check out the links in the description for AE Scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad, where I post a lot of tools and products I'm working on. All right, so first you're gonna to wanna to click on the link in the description, which is gonna take you to this Adobe or UXP for Adobe Photoshop 2022. Previously, there is a link to this page, which only allows you to view the 2021 API. So if you don't see this drop down here, which has 2022 and 2021, click on the link in the description and uh, make sure you're updated because this has updated functions, updated bugs, code, and everything that you'll need to know, which will no longer necessarily work in 2021. So this video is gonna be discussing some of these issues and changes that I noticed when trying to upgrade my plugin from 2021 to 2022, as well as the general missing support currently for things that you wanna put or animate or transform inside of your plugin. So firstly, that is the big tip is make sure you're using the right Photoshop version. You want to stay up to date with UXP, the main reason being that it's constantly updating. And this is quite a headache right now for developers. For example, I'm in the process of developing a UXP plugin and what happened was we had a set of features that were working fine and as soon as we upgraded to 2022, some of those features stopped working or had to be completely rewritten and worked around um, and that is a frustrating thing when dealing with these developing uh, languages and things from Adobe, but you are at the cutting edge and you'll be way ahead of everyone else when it comes to learning UXP. So make sure you're using the most up-to-date version of Adobe Photoshop or whatever uh, supported UXP Adobe program you're using and the most up-to-date guide. So if we go over to the Photoshop UI and if I actually put these side by side, if I do a 2021 Photoshop API versus a 2022 Photoshop API, there's already gonna be some differences just on the first page. If I go to the document module for 2021, and then the and then the document module for 2022 uh, at this size they actually appear similar so let's let's bring these up a little bit more in scale and here we can see some major differences so here's 2021 and here's 2022 as you can see as I go back and forth you can see the amount of different properties and methods that have changed just in that one version and if you look on the left side here these are all of our supported Photoshop modules in 2021. In 2022, it is three times as many modules. Um, now, this needs to be noted that this process isn't purely additive. All of these extra modules, methods, and properties in 2022 are not necessarily additive and building completely on top of the existing 2021. Um, sometimes things are completely removed. We have duplicate layers as a method in 2021 for your document. Um, and sometimes the functions between the two versions are different. And sometimes things lose support if you look very closely. Um, and that's slightly annoying. Uh, but you kind of get used to this as you upgrade the versions. It, it will really bring fluency kind of to you discovering what is supported in each version. But just know that when something's working, one of the reasons it could not be working is because it might not be supported in this version of the API. Another really subtle and annoying thing with 2022 versus 2021 is something that requires you to have to mess around more with asynchronicity. For example, if you want to use the save as 
method or property it's called. Um, and you want to save, say, the current document as a PSD, as a JPEG, as whatever. You can't just run this function, unfortunately. It took me hours of basically console logging to try and figure out that although this just says save as is the property or method here, what we end up having to do is to use what's called modal execution. This is actually a really important feature. Um, let's see if there's a way back version. No. So, okay. I know this is a quick tip, but this is annoying. So the one of the most important things that was updated is that some things like save as and other functions need to be run using this modal execution method or executors modal. What this basically does is it gives focus to the project or whatever needs focus uh, to run its function and then give focus back to the UXP plugin. This page was perfectly working just a few days ago. One of the biggest headaches I've noticed is that some parts of the guide, they may look nicely documented, but sometimes they're wrong. But what I was trying to make the point of is I was trying to discover how to use this save as method. I tried asynchronously doing it. I tried a whole bunch of things. I tried posting on forums and stuff. And I finally discovered that what was required is this modal execution uh, piece of code, which basically says, if you want to save your project, give focus to the document or the project so it can do that, run this function or method of save as, and then send it back to UXP. In terms of code, what that usually looks like now that we can't see it, is to say await because we're asyncing we're going to say require photoshop core execute as modal which is what this is supposed to tell us and then we're going to give it a function to run in this case i had a whole bunch of batch play functions that i wanted to have executed and then you can define your own command name it's very simple you basically whenever there's a big error in 2022 that's not letting you run something sometimes you have to execute it as a modal which is some similar to like an asynchronous thing or uh, giving focus to a certain part of the program, you give it the function, and you give it a custom name, and it will run it. For some reason, that has now disappeared from here. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's uh, just just take this whole guide with a grain of salt. While this is going to be the new scripting of the future, it all has to be rewritten. So I'm sure there's going to be plenty of typos for things like this, or missing information that tells you you need to use the modal execution. Um, so that's kind of the big thing I wanted to go over about the difference between 2021 and 2022, take the guide with a grain of salt and do lots of testing because you never know if from one version to the next, it's not going to work or if the guide has mistype, uh, mistypings. You can go into the UXP developer forums and see a lot of people complaining about uh, typos and stuff, but I don't want to complain too much because these people are rewriting the entire scripting from scratch. So there's going to be some issues like that and we're still in the very early stages. The last thing I wanted to talk about were a few of the most unsupported things that are common in other extensions and products. Um, and firstly, that's going to be only some HTML elements and CSS properties are supported. Um, I've discussed before in spe the Spectrum tutorial that I created that uh, normal HTML buttons are no longer supported. You do need to use Spectrum buttons. And there are other elements that aren't supported. I believe spans are one of them as well, but you might find that when designing your UXP plugin, uh, if some things aren't even appearing in your UI or your styling is not working properly, consider that it may not be supported yet or at all. Another big hit that's going to suck going forward unless they add support is that Node.js, with the exception of a few of the built-in modules, are gone. And even then, when I say built-in modules, they aren't physically using the Node.js library to use, for example, file system or child processes, uh, which are a few of the built-in Node.js modules, they're actually imported separately through UXP. So one thing is if you have Node.js libraries you want to use, you might have to find a way around using that. Um, React is supported, so possibly you can use React instead. The only Node.js support that you can use for your UXP plugin is to compile, obfuscate, and prepare your code for final distribution. That's a big thing that you need to know as well. And the last one that took me a little bit to figure out is the canvas is not supported. CSS transformations, not supported. Animation properties, not supported. If you want to scale your HTML elements or anything like that, you want to translate them, you want to rotate them, not going to happen. You want to have a fade for when you hover over something. So it fades up in opacity or fades up in something like that to give a nice animation. Currently not supported. 
Everything's going to have to be pretty binary, on or off state, um, and transitions appear not to be something that's going to be supported anytime soon, but I could be wrong. Hopefully things like this will get support. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Those are the main UXP API version differences between CC 2021 and CC 2022. Take the guide with a grain of salt. Do lots of experimenting and reading through it so you can become familiar with it and familiar with the faults in it as well. And those are also some of the unsupported, unfortunate things that are not currently supported in UXP plugins, which might be commonly used uh, in your other products like CEP extensions. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates and Instagram for other live updates, as well as the link for today's content. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you want to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, a link in the description. Also check out the links below for AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange, where I'm also posting other cool tools and products I'm working on. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.